we've had quite a bit of discussion related to amplifiers and uh, you know we have a quiz coming up uh, on friday and uh, and in any course we ask you to you know we we ask you to solve a lot of problems we ask you to remember lots of things but one of the uh, you know one complaint i once heard that we ask you to solve a lot of problems we but we don't uh, tell you how to solve the problems that much we ask you to remember lots of things but we don't tell you how to remember okay and each person remembers in his or her own way so i thought maybe as an example uh, you guys know that uh, uh, there are two ways of uh, there are two ways of remembering uh, something one is a brute force way and uh, you know after you see a circuit like this several times uh, or you memorize there's an r1 r2 rc re uh, you, know, you know that that are there you memorize the structure and very often we have seen that uh, you know after you memorize if we ask you about the structure yes you can reproduce it but one year down the line or one and a half years down the line if we ask you to draw a common emitter amplifier and what happens is that one or the other element is usually missing somebody forgets to put an re there somebody forgets to put a capacitor there and the circuits are often wrong very often wrong the circuits that people draw and when we point out to them you know then things come back and say yes yes there needs to be a capacitor there or there needs to be a resistor there and all that so anyway so i, I thought that maybe there is a, a better way of remembering things which is uh, not based on just looking at it and memorizing the structure but is based on some logic okay so uh, here is an example i thought so i was sitting down yesterday i thought maybe uh, one could remember this particular circuit in this manner here okay so is there a better way of remembering so a 10 step approach for drawing the common emitter amplifier okay <laughs> you you may say well wh why such a long uh, series i can quickly draw it okay but there's a logic okay so we are talking about let's see if it makes sense we are talking about common emitter amplifier a bgt amplifier so obviously i start with a that's the first step i start with a i need a transistor npn transistor i'm amplifying it so obviously i need a source a source which i wants to amplify and you know the amplified output will be delivered to the load so i need a load rl right now an amplifier what does it do it takes power from the supply and transfers it to the load right so the next step is i have a supply here takes power from the supply and transfers it to the load here the next step is we are building a common emitter amplifier where we take output from the collector so collector obviously i can't connect directly to vcc and uh, note that the power has to start uh, start from the supply here and flow to the load here so we have to connect an rc if i don't connect an rc if i directly connect to vcc then the collector voltage becomes constant and nothing can appear no signal can appear at that particular point then we remember that how do we bias this particular transistor we bias it by through the emitter resistor here by developing a voltage at this particular point that's what we were discussing okay so we develop a voltage here and divided by re so that gives rise to the current here so the biasing is based on uh, developing an emitter current here which then results in a collector current here how do we generate a voltage here well we use a voltage divider whatever voltage we want we create a voltage divider that voltage divider minus 0.7 generates the voltage here so we have our biasing how do we couple the input signal to, so as not to disturb the uh, bias point we put a capacitor there then because we don't want uh, the signal here to drop across re uh, you know we want it to be uh, dropped across base emitter voltage here so we bypass this uh, so uh, uh, so we bypass this particular uh, uh, resistor here and of course we couple the load as well here so a 10 step approach for drawing the common emitter amplifier and is based on logic it's not simply that you're drawing first r1 then you're drawing rl then you're drawing rc and then you're drawing r2 in, in some random haphazard manner you draw it based on a logic why is something there all right so if you remember it like that then it makes more sense and i probably it will be more lasting a uh, year or two years down the line you may still remember why i did this okay otherwise if you just remember it randomly and i think at some random point you'll forget it also okay so uh, anyway so uh, think about it so when you memorize formulas when you look at 
gain formula, input resistance formula. Think about the logic behind it also. Apart from the what the actual expression is, what is the logic? In the formula itself, many times the logic is there. You can see why it should be like that. Okay. All right. The next thing is, uh, so that's as far as, uh, as an example of how you may remember. The next thing is, let's look at DC analysis. We know that in amplifiers, we have to do DC as well as uh, small signal analysis. So let's look at the examples of DC analysis. So here is example number one. All right. So in this case, I'm not going to fully solve it, but we'll look at how we approach problems like this here. So this is our example number one. And all DC analysis that we'll do is based on these two facts. That base emitter voltage will approximate it as 0.7 and collector current is related to IB through a beta. Because we assume that the transistors, if the amplifier has been designed properly, all the transistors that you see here would operate in forward active mode in which IC is beta times IB. Okay, so we assume that. We can check, of course, at the end whether this is really true or not. And the other one is VB is 0.7. So whichever circuit is given to you, these are the two things that you have to apply to your circuit to eventually determine what the bias point is. Okay, so let's see, for example, so it all depends on where you start. When you see a circuit, what is my, uh, you know, point of attack? So in this case, for example, VB is 0.7. We know that this voltage we immediately know is 0.7. If this is ground, this is forward bias, this is 0.7. This is also forward bias, so we know 1.4. Fine. Once we know 1.4, I know this current IB1. Once I know this current IB1, I know this current IC1 through the beta relationship. Once I know IC1, I know this current as well, the base current of this transistor. And therefore, I know the collector current of Q2. And the two currents will add up and give rise to the final current here. Right? So all based on 0.7 and IC is equal to beta IB. And then you proceed in a systematic manner and you'll know the currents and voltages everywhere else in your cell. Okay, let's see another example. Example number two. I have to determine, we're only talking about the bias point. What is my starting point? Bias point, remember when you are doing the bias, please take the source and short it. So this is short. Let's see, minus 0.7. Ground here, all the transistors are biased. This has to be minus 0.7. We know this current here. And in this problem, I mean, the problem statement is not given, but in this problem, Q1 and Q2 are identical. Q1 and Q2 are identical. So this current that you see here will divide equally between these two. So I know the current here. And once I know the current here, I, need, I know all the voltages and everything else. The problem is solved. All right. Yes. The connections are not identical. There is a resistor here, right? But remember, two transistors, when you look at Q1 and Q2, how does collector current depend? Collector current is an exponential function of base emitter voltage. And the two transistors are identical, same base emitter voltage. And it has a very weak dependence on the early voltage, 1 plus VC by VA. So in DC analysis, we don't bother so much about the early voltage part, the small difference because of the early voltage. Okay. So if the transistors are identical and the base emitter voltage is identical, the currents in the two of them will be identical. First order approximation. Yeah. Previous one, yeah. Yes, Q2. In? So what I said is, if the amplifier is designed properly, all the transistors would work in forward active. So you assume that it's forward active. And see, after all of that, we'll get the value of the current here. Remember, we get the value of the current here. You'll know the value of this voltage here. Check. Perform the check. Is it in uh, forward active or not? If it's in forward active, everything is fine. If it's not in forward active, then what you have to do is, in addition to this, you have to write down that whichever transistor is not in forward active, the voltage across it, VCE, is 0.2. Okay? So that's the uh, thing that you have to finally add. Okay? So let's look at other example here. Okay, so where do we start? Where do we start in this amplifier? Huh? Emitter of Q1. Any other suggestion? Can I start with the base of Q2? Can I start with the base of Q2 or not?
Well, can I write what is the voltage here? But to write the voltage here, I need I need the voltage here. I don't I don't know that. Okay, so you're right. We start at the here. We put minus 0.7. We get the current here. And remember, in all these analysis, we assume that the emitter current is almost equal to collector current. Okay, we don't bother with the slight uh, difference here. So we know the current here. Same current is flowing here. We know the current here. Then we know the voltage here. That's how we can arrive at the voltage here, correct? Because once you know the current here, you know the drop at this particular point, you know this voltage here, this minus VBE will tell you this particular voltage. Okay? All right, what about this one? The circuits are becoming bigger and bigger. All right, so where do we start? But it's not that difficult. You know, when you look at it, it may see, oh, it's a big circuit. What do I do with it? But actually, uh, you know, once you overcome your initial fear, the circuits are not that uh, complex to analyze. Where do we start? Here? I agreed? 0 0.7? 0 0.7 here. I get a current here. All right. What is that? With this current, what do I get? Collect a current here. Correct? Q1. What is the next step? Next step. What do I do with the next step? This is a voltage divider. I know this voltage. What, what assumption do I make? The base current is, or whatever base current here is negligible, small. So I get this voltage here, VB2. Check it out later on whether that's true or not. So you get uh, VB2 here. So you get VE2 here. All right? You get this voltage here. And then you get this current here. You get this current here. Now this current is known and this current is known, so you know this current here. <laughs> this current and then this current, and so you know all the currents here. Now, what is an assumption that we have made? The assumption that we have made is that this current that, that is flowing here is small. How do I check it out? Well, once I get this current divided by beta, and you know the current that is flowing here, and you know the uh, this current, base current you know, and what is the current flowing in this particular branch if you neglect the base current? VCC by R1 plus R2. VCC divided by R1 plus R2. And if this current is much smaller than this, then you're okay. If not, then what you'll have to do is build a Thevenin's equivalent and all that that we saw uh, of how to handle if, if there's a voltage divide. But most of the time, as I said, if the circuit is designed properly, the base current is much smaller than this particular value. What about this one? Now, in this case, the problem is something else. The problem is, for what value of RC2, for what value of RC2 is V0 equal to 0? Okay, we want to design this particular circuit such that the output voltage is zero. So what is my starting point? Let's start with zero. I want zero here. Then zero means, what do I have here? 1.4. Now 1.4 here, I want to know RC2. So if I knew the current here, I would have calculated RC2. So I need to know the current here. I don't know it, but I need to know the current here. With this current would have given me RC2, but I know that this current is equal to this current here. So I need to know this current. Now this current I would have been able to calculate if I knew this voltage. If I knew this voltage. Now to know this particular voltage, I have to know this voltage here. Because this voltage and this voltage are related through 0.7. Now this voltage I can know only if I have this particular current. And this current I will know if I know this particular current. And do I know this particular current? Well, I know this voltage here. This is minus 1.4. So I can work my way backwards and arrive at the value of this particular current and figure out RC2. Okay? So it's all, as you can see, it's only 1.7 and IC equal to beta IB. That's all. But in a systematic manner, you have to proceed and find, uh, find things out. There's nothing else outside that. Okay? So for what value of RC2? So please uh, fight, uh, uh, work it out. So things, as I said, things may look complicated, but if you proceed in a logical manner, it, it, it's quite, uh, it's not that bad. All right. The next thing is, so that's as far as we do uh, DC analysis. Okay. Uh, by the way, this circuit that you see here 
is uh, is a three stage amplifier that you see one stage two stage and three stage is an example of a uh, what i would say is a very simple op amp <coughs> this is a very simple op amp okay all right next thing is uh, we have to do so after we do the dc analysis we have to do the small signal analysis all right so for example if we are given an amplifier like this and somebody asks you what is input transistance well then what we do is well we go ahead and put all the small signal model we put you know we know that capacitors all these things when they are asked they are asked at uh, mid band so capacitors becomes short vcc becomes ground uh, and and then you replace the transistor by a small signal model and you know uh, sometimes it would be uh, uh, given to you that neglect r0 of the transistor sometimes it will be told to you that r0 is important include it in your analysis r0 of the uh, uh, transistor itself anyway so once you get that note that input transistors would be vs divided by is so that's what you have to figure it out you have to solve the circuit and do it okay so that's one approach for doing it similarly so i'm not telling you uh, so you can uh, dig in use your mesh nodal whatever you want to do you can do it and calculate whatever is the value of r similarly let's say there's an amplifier like this and somebody asks you the, the voltage is over here somebody asks you what is the output resistance looking from you so when when output resistance is being asked so what we do is note that we build a small signal equivalent circuit with capacitors short you attach a source at this point here vx and find out this ix here and output resistance is vx by ix so you remove the independent source from your circuit wherever the resistance is being asked you attach a voltage and find out what is vx by ix and that gives you the resistance looking from here so you'll see i'll, I'll be using a lot of these uh, arrows here what does it mean it means the resistance looking at this particular point resistance between this node and ground okay that's what this particular arrow mean i'm asking what is the resistance when i look into my amplifier from this side what do i see okay so between this node and ground what do i see if i remove a source then this particular amplifier under small signal condition is nothing but a resistor when nothing is connected here you can see ground 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 so looking from here all that i will see is a resistor and since we are calling it the output port so is the output resistance okay so vx by x so at one point of time so how would you do that well you can go and do that do it similarly by replacing the each transistor by hybrid pi and uh, uh, model and then work out the equations and all that so i i don't remember when but this problem was given to uh, students and uh, uh, this is how this is the final answer but anyway this is an example of one student working it out okay working it out drawing the uh, hybrid pi model writing the equations cutting it out cutting it out okay somewhere some mistake occurs doesn't get the answer i'm not saying that uh, what you are saying is that it, uh, even for a two transistor circuit is becoming messy the analysis is becoming messy it's not that you can't get the right answer here is another person who gets the right answer okay all right what's the difference between here and here between these two huh what <laughs> this question is already solved it before okay all right i i don't think so but uh, but uh, i think he's more systematic let's uh, so uh, you know the person got the answer two transistor circuit what if i put 3 and 4 what are the chances of uh, getting the right answer the the uh, so what we are looking for is is there a better way of carrying out small signal analysis than this is there a better way of doing it what is the conventional method of analysis take this transistor replace it by hybrid pi take this transistor replace it by hybrid pi start writing your loop and mesh and nodal or whatever it is and seeing where where it leads you okay that's the conventional method what we are asking is there a better better in what sense better that the method is simpler simpler than what i have given you and the other thing is less error prone i make less errors 
That's what we are looking for. Okay. So in this case, we don't do analysis in the way that I showed you. What we, what our analysis is based on is that looking at a circuit and not doing mesh and nodal and all of that, but recognizing, see, all the circuits that you will encounter are actually made up of recognizable blocks. You can take your circuit and decompose it into small, small blocks. And if you remember the results of those small blocks, you can apply those results and the analysis would become much simpler. What are those blocks? Let me let, so first of all, remember whether it's an NPN or PNP, the model is the same as we have said. Same RPI, same GMVB, same R0, everything is the same for the transistor. So whatever I say about NPN transistor, the same thing is applicable to PNP transistor. Okay, what are those blocks here? I'm not giving you a complete list of those blocks, but a few of them, which you will see that will make the analysis simpler. Look at this block here. I'm saying wherever you see a transistor with a resistance in the emitter, and it may or may not have a resistance in the collector, the resistance looking from the base side. What do I mean by when you look into the side, the resistance looking into it, which means between this node and ground, the resistance is how much? R pi plus beta R. R pi is between here and whatever is the resistance in the emitter that gets multiplied by beta. That's one result which you, which you will find will come out very handy. You don't have to again and again, where do I get this result? Well, you can take this transistor out, put a hybrid pi model, and put a source here, Vx, put a current Ix, and you'll come to this particular result. Since this particular block occurs so many times in so many places, why do the analysis again and again? Okay, this particular part you will see at many places, so why not remember this particular result that the resistance looking from here is R pi. Note that I put an approximate sign. More accurately, it would be R pi 1 plus beta, but we don't bother about 1. We want to keep things simple, so R pi plus beta R. That's a very useful result, okay? Uh, another one, and remember these results that I have at a later point in time, I'll give you a more systematic way of a small signal analysis, uh, a, a more general way, okay? But right now, uh, this one is here. This expression is valid as long as your RC, RE, all these resistors are much smaller than output resistance. The other result is resistors looking from, see, this was resistors looking from the base. When I see a transistor from the base side, what do I see? I see R pi plus beta R. When I see a transistor from the emitter, now this could be a PNP transistor or it could be an NPN. When I see a transistor from the emitter side, what do I see? I see R pi, note that there's an R pi plus R B, but the whole thing gets divided by beta. More accurately, it should be one plus beta, but we are not keeping one with, with us, okay? R pi plus R B divided by beta. So when I look at a transistor from the emitter, this is what it is. When I look at it from the base, this is what it is. Then the other one is, when I look at my, this part you will see again and again. When I have a transistor with a source attached here, Vs, and with the resistor attached here, Re, the whole circuit that you see here at this particular point, the whole circuit at this particular point, at the collector, between the collector and ground, I can approximate it by a Norton's equivalent, a current source. The value of the current source is GMVS divided by 1 plus GMRE and a resistor R. R is R0, 1 plus GMRE parallel R pi. It's a new equation for you, but it's good to memorize this. Okay, some things you have to memorize. Okay, and GMVS by 1 plus GMRE. So that's a very important result. Another thing that you will see many times is a transistor with its base a, a collector shorted together. That particular transistor, you can see that between these two points is nothing but it's a resistor of 1 over GM. All right. All these are small signal results. Do not confuse small signal with DC. These are, do not apply these to a DC case here. Okay. We do see people sometimes, uh, you know, saying that this is equal to uh, in DC analysis 1 over GM. Okay. These are all small signal results. So four results I'm telling, uh, giving it to you. And with these four results, there's a lot of analysis that you can do uh, 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 in, in much shorter time. Okay, let's let's see an example here. Example number one. So I have to analyze this particular circuit. I want to find out what is V0 by Vs. Okay, what are those results that I want to remember? 
well, the, uh, the normal way would be to write this hybrid pi, hybrid pi, and calculate. But what, we are, what we'll do is we'll remember this particular result, right? One of those results are this. Okay, can I apply this to this one? Let's suppose I go ahead. Now, if I apply this one to this circuit, I will end up with this. Let's see how. Suppose I apply it here, this result. At the collector, what does this whole block become? What does it say? At the collector, it would be, there is no RE here, so it, it would be GMVS. At this point, it would be GMVS. In parallel with the resistor R, R will be what? When RE is zero, R will be simply R0. So this whole block that you see here is basically this block. Correct? And what about the upper block? No. Upper block? Now, what are you doing? When you look at the upper block, look, you are looking up, right? You're looking into the collector. You're looking what? You're looking into the collector. When you look into the collector, look at this particular uh, uh, sub block here. When you look into the collector and there is no source and there is no RE, what does this thing, whole thing become? When there is no RE and there is no source, when you look into the collector, when you look into the this thing, what does it become? R0. So this upper block that you see here is nothing but this block here, R0, R0 too. So your whole circuit that you see here just boils down to GMVS R01 parallel R02, and you can immediately write down what is V0. V0 will be equal to minus GMVS R01 parallel R02. So it's based on recognizing that my circuit that you see here has blocks like this here. I can apply this this particular block to this part here, and I can apply it to this part here. Note what this is. It's saying when you look into the collector of a transistor. When you look into the collector of a transistor, this is what you see. If there is a source, you will have a source here. If there is no source, then you will have only an R. If there is no RE, then you, it's simply equal to R0. Okay, so it's a very important result, which you can apply at many places. You can, we applied it here. We, and we applied it here also, right? So once you remember this particular result, I don't have to do this now. I don't have to do this kind of an analysis. I can simply, as I said, recognize blocks. I can take my circuit and analyze it in terms of blocks. And those block results I already have. And so I apply those particular results, okay? Let's take other example here. So I, I gave you this particular example and I showed you all the messy calculations that were there. Uh, one of the students who tried this particular uh, way of doing it, these are all actual student results. So he solved it like this. So he used this particular result that when you look into the emitter, what do you see? You see R pi plus R B by beta. How did he solve it? That's all he did. He or she, I don't remember. So that's all was done here. So resistance looking from this side is how much when you look into the emitter? Rs plus R pi by beta. So the, uh, remember R pi by beta is nothing but 1 over GM. So this part is first when you look from here, this is what happens here. Again, when you look from here, this is what you get. It's a two-step analysis. So compare that with the long uh, nodal mesh or whatever versus this way of doing it. How, what is it based on? Recognizing that there is a block like this for whose result you already know. Okay, so the issue is, can I, a complicated circuit, decompose it into recognizable blocks? I showed you four of them. But I said those are not exhaustive list of blocks here. It's not that every circuit can be analyzed by those four blocks here. I'm not claiming that right now. That any circuit that you will encounter, if you remember one, two, three, four, you can solve. At a later point in time, as I said, we'll give you a more general method in which any circuit that you have, if you memorize seven, eight blocks, you can analyze any particular circuit. You don't have to do those mesh and nodal and all that based on this one here. Now, if you're wondering, uh, 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 why do I have to do that? Well, uh, you know, why do I have to memorize? Well, if you don't want to memorize, then you'll have to do what the previous guys were doing. They didn't memorize this result, so you'll have to write down the whole hybrid pipe model and work it out. Okay, so you have a choice. Either you do it in this particular manner here that I'm showing you, or you do it in the 
other one. The effort would be much larger and, uh, uh, you know, it would be more error prone. Okay, a good analogy for, uh, for what we are doing is, uh, good analogy is that remember when you learned a multiplication in your, when you were kids, how did you learn multiplication? Three into five is what? How did you learn? Three fives of 15 is what? How did you learn? Multiplication is repeated addition, right? So three fives of 15, so you take five block and five and another five and you count and you say, yeah, three into five is 15, right? But then can you do complex uh, multiplication through repeated addition if I say 25 into 30 or 35? You can't put 25, 30, 35 times and keep on adding. You can't do that. So what was it based on? All of you had, as children had to memorize the multiplication tables. Seven eights are, nine sevens are, and all that. You had to memorize the multiplication tables. And it was, uh, you know, we all hated it. <laughs> you know, uh, remembering the multiplication tables. We all hated it. But remember, can you do complex multiplication without the multiplication table? You can't. You can't do a complex if it, uh, 23 into 46. You can't do that without knowing your multiplication tables. Right? You had to memorize some elementary results. And then do. So similarly, the analogy is if you want to do complex, complex analysis, you can't go back to that repeated addition method. You can't go back and substitute a hybrid pi everywhere and have a big circuit and then do, you know, nodal and mesh and all that and start doing it. You can't do that. It doesn't work. You can't use that particular method. What you have to do is uh, look at some simpler blocks. These are your multiplication tables. Okay, that this is a block R pi plus R B by beta. You have to remember this. You have to remember this, uh, and then you apply these particular results there to 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 your circuit here. Okay, so that's the method that we are talking about. So let's see, how do I apply my method here? What I'm looking for is V zero by V s. So the first thing that you do is when you're given a circuit and you have to calculate what is V zero by V s, draw a small single circuit first. Don't replace the transistor by hybrid pi. Just draw the circuit by removing VCC and all that. So this becomes ground. This becomes ground. So remove all this VCC here and, and remove all the capacitors if that, if they're there and put your small signal equivalent circuit. Fine. Okay. So we are here. Now let's see what we can recognize here. This one. Can you recognize what I can do with it? What do I do? I'm looking at. So when I look into this whole block, I'm looking into the emitter. When I look into the emitter, what do I see? Look at that. When I look into the emitter, I see R pi plus R B by beta. So can I replace this whole block by what? What will you replace it by? There is no R B. R pi by beta. R pi by beta is 1 over GM. So you'll replace the whole block by 1 over GM. And where would that resistor come? That resistor would be between this node and ground. Please remember this. When I say resistor looking from here, it is between this node and ground. So you will take the whole block and replace it by a resistor between this node and ground. Right? So do, I'm not going to work it out. Please do that later. Now, can I recognize this block? Once I've done with this, I elim eliminated this particular block. Look at this particular one. Very important block. So this block that you see here, what can I replace it by? A current source with an R, right? So I, at this point, I can write a current source here, this current source. Do I know all the values? Yes, GM, VS, and 1 plus GM, RE, RE I know will be this resistor in parallel with this one, okay? In parallel with this one. Now, the other thing is many times in uh, earlier courses or whatever, wherever you might have learned that what we should do is, we should do a complete general analysis and at the end, make the approximation. At the end, decide, make the approximation. In circuits, you don't do that. At each point, if you can simplify, please do that. So for example, when I calculate, I will calculate that this resistor is one over GM. One over GM is a very small quantity. Typically, if you calculate one over GM, may come out to be 20 ohms, 50 ohms or whatever. And you find 50 ohms is in parallel with RE, which is 1K. Neglect RE. Don't carry it forward. Simplify it at that particular point itself. Okay? So 50 ohm in parallel with RE, so just put 50 ohms there. That's it straight. 
Okay, so make the uh, approximation right and right there. Otherwise, your expressions will keep blowing up. Will become more and more complicated. We don't want to do that. Remember, as circuit, when we are doing this analysis, we will derive all our results, and eventually, we have a circuit simulation tool. We go ahead and check our results. You know, so we are able to catch errors. Okay. So anyway, so you take this particular one, and uh, you approximate it by uh, you uh, with this one here. Now note the value when you look into the collector. When you look into the collector, the resistor that you see here is what R zero multiplied by another larger quantity. So it's a resistor which is larger than R zero. At the minimum, when you look into this particular node here into the collector, the minimum value of resistor is R zero. If there is an R e, then it becomes R zero into one plus G M R e parallel. It becomes a large resistor. So when you look into this particular node, there's a resistor, large resistor. And if this is 4K, R0, please calculate. R0 would be if it's biased at 1 milliampere, 100K. So most of the time, you may find that this resistor is very large. You don't even have to keep it. Okay? So make a quick assessment. Have a have a notion of what is this R0. So sometimes in our analysis, we'll tell you neglect R0. Neglect R0, which means there's no R. Okay? There's no R here. So all that you do is at this particular node, you just have a current source. Okay, and then we have a resistor, so you should be able to now find out what the answer is. Okay, so based on again taking a circuit, decomposing it into recognizable block. There's a block like this for which I already have a result. I have a block like this for which I already have a result. So why is this analysis less error prone? It's less error prone because you have a result which you've already calculated. You know the answer is correct. This answer you know is already correct. You're not recalculating again and again. You know that five into three is fifteen. You remember it. You know it's right. You're not making a mistake there. Okay. So it's the same way. You know that resistor looking into the emitter is R pi plus R B by beta. It's a known result. It's an accurate result. It's the correct result. And when you apply it, you know you're not making errors. Okay. So let's look at a complicated circuit like this. How do we handle this? Again, the first step is draw a a small signal uh, circuit here by removing all the VCCs, removing all the capacitors here. So first step is do this, simplify it. Okay. Now start recognizing. Can I recognize this? Look at here. This doesn't bother us. Note that even if I put a RB here, it, it doesn't bother us because VS means VS goes directly to the base here. So I can replace this by this one here, except there is no RE, and so you remove RE here and all that. So you know the circuit here at this point. What about this one? When I look into the emitter, note that when I look into the emitter, whether it's PNP or NPN is the same thing. When I look into the emitter, what do I see? R pi plus R B by beta. So this whole block, I can replace it by a resistor. I can replace it by a resistor here. This whole block that you see, okay. And uh, so at this point, at this point, note that I can draw a circuit which is GM1 VS R01. This whole thing is GM VS R01. This is R, and this is one over GM2. One over GM2. Now this current that you see here, GM1 VS, where do you think it will flow? It flows through a parallel combination here, but look at the numbers that are involved. Typically, as I said, you'll find R01 is very large. R will be somewhere in the medium range, and 1 over GM is very small. Where would this current flow? Flow through here. It will flow through 1 over GM2. What is this 1 over GM2? Which means that this current that you see here will flow where? Into this. This is 1 over GM2. It flows here into the emitter. And when, once this, so this current GM and VS that you see here flows through 1 over GM2, which means flows into the emitter. And then where will it come out? That current that flows here will start here, flow into the emitter, and then eventually flow into the collector and come out here. So what will be the output voltage? How much will be the output voltage? GM1 VS multiplied by RC2. That's it. The whole circuit that you see here, here, go back. What is the output voltage here we are wanting to calculate? 
gm1 times vs multiplied by rc2 that's what it comes out okay so as i said when you see circuits decompose them into all these blocks that you see here and use this particular results after that you don't have to do your large small signal analysis don't have to do that what about here last huh last slide, last slide okay <laughs> rc no so look when i'm saying i'm looking into the emitter when i look into the emitter there is rb there is rc but the when you look into the emitter is r pi plus rb by beta as long as rc and rb are much smaller than r0 that's a resumption as long as these resistors are much smaller than r0 i'm fine it doesn't matter whether rc is there or not there as a first order approximation it doesn't matter as i said later on in the course i can give you a more accurate expression uh, where the errors are much less and uh, you know you can put whatever value of rc and you have a uh, uh, a more accurate expression so th these are valid as long as rc and rb are much smaller than r okay no so this node that this is the uh, what i have built at this particular node at this node this circuit is this one gm1 r01 at this particular node i have an r also connected and at this particular node i have this whole block is 1 over gm2 so there's an intermediate step as things become more complex you'll have to uh, do an intermediate step one step it will not give you the answer so we calculate at this point where is this current flowing this current is flowing here 1 over gm2 and then it's flowing here which means it's flowing into the emitter then we see into the emitter then eventually through the collector and we calculate okay yes rb1 is uh, is uh, it doesn't play a role here because note that this block says that vs is directly attached to the base vs is still directly attached to the base what role rb1 will play if i if i want to calculate the input resistance if i want to calculate the input resistance resistance looking into here then rb1 will come in parallel with other things okay so it will play a role there yes so no 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 q2 is not in reverse bias these are small signal this is a small signal model in small signal model it can be either ways current can go into the emitter out of the emitter remember it's a sinusoid as an example is small signal it's not reverse if you go back to the dc the currents are note the current would be coming from here and going here it's not reverse small signal is a small current which is riding on top of a dc actual current is is going into the emitter okay so that's where confusions do arise is a small signal current can go in any direction okay the last one is this one again all of these we can we can solve by first thing is to draw your small signal model simplify it, draw it out properly lay it out properly these are the three blocks that are there and please apply it you can see that uh, at various places either you use this result or you use this result or you use this result apply these results to different blocks that are there maybe i apply it here can you see what i'll do with this which result will i apply the first one the first one i'll apply this whole block that you see here i'm looking into the emitter side i'm saying if i look at this block from the emitter side what can i do i apply this particular result then i'll apply uh which one this one okay so at various places you'll see that you'll apply either one of these results here. okay and you'll be able to get the answer that you're looking for okay so decompose your circuit into these blocks that you see here and uh, uh so what i would suggest is the following i'm going to post uh, after i post these uh, notes don't look at uh, my solution uh, i mean uh, uh, my solution is also partial in nature take each one of these circuits i have uh, six circuits that are there six circuits which are there uh, take those four blocks that are there that i told you and apply those four blocks to these six circuits and try to get the answer that you're looking for okay practice it it would help you uh 
for the, uh, I mean, uh, not just for the exam, but it would help you uh, analyze and understand uh, uh, more complex circuits here. Yeah.